Hello, my name is Doria Garcia, and I am a tribal member from Okeowinge Pueblo. Today, I want to share a little bit about myself, of who I am, and also my artwork. My mother is from Zuni Pueblo, and my father was from Okeowinge Pueblo. I was born in Gallup, New Mexico, but I grew up in Okeowinge Pueblo since I was about three years old. I have two daughters, uh, Kayla and Jenea. I have three granddaughters and another one on the way. I have been working with pottery since 2003. I have uh, both grandparents, grandmothers on both sides of my family in Zuni and in Okeowinge who were um, potters. I never stuck with it um, as I got older and in 2003 I figured that I wanted to pick it up back again so I enrolled in the classes at the Po Center in Powaki Pueblo. There the instructor was Clarence Cruz who is also a tribal member from Okeawinge and I took the classes since then. I started the classes in 2003 and I took classes all the way up till about 2010. I'm glad I did because it taught me a lot also with the techniques and learning um, a little bit more on the firing part of it, um, collecting the clays. Our place to go was to Pitaka, New Mexico and we used to go there on the weekends to go and dig our clay, bring them back and get them cleaned and lay them down to to dry and you know get to the texture that's needed to create uh, the pottery pieces. Since then I've worked with uh, traditional clay, uh, micaceous clay. I also work now with the uh, contemporary clay. It's the white mica contemporary commercial clay that I work with. I also work on ceramic pieces. I do paintings with acrylics. I work with woodwork and I used to do stone sculpting also. I took uh, stone sculpting classes also at the Post Center in 2005 for about a year. I didn't really keep up with the stone sculpting but uh, as for the pottery I started in 2003 and I still continue till this day. A few of my pieces um, I have with me I'm going to share with you. I also have some back here that I worked on this morning that I'm making. Right now they're sitting in the pookies that I made out of plaster. A little bit about myself is I'm the only child uh, from my mother and father. I do have uh, siblings on both sides of the family, but right now I'm the only one who's making pottery uh, within my immediate family. My goal is to try to get my grandkids and maybe even nieces and nephews to carry it on, um, whether it be pottery or working with painting or woodwork, just to have them keep the tradition going. Uh, that was my whole goal. My grandparents used to work on pottery when I was young and that's what I remember but when they passed away it just kind of died with them. We, uh, no one really carried it on but like I said I'm, I'm so glad and fortunate that I have this gift and talent to do something like this and so this is why I share it with everyone that I possibly can. Right now that I consider myself is a native contemporary artist. Um, I do make some traditional pieces but majority of the time it's to me considered contemporary because I don't make the same pieces twice. I tend to venture out and try something different whether it's with the micaceous clay, uh, contemporary clay, woodwork. I feel like it, you know, if it's something that can be done, I'm gonna try it at least once. Right now, the pieces that I have drying are gonna be plates that I will either make into a 3D dimensional look or just painting on there. Um, I'll have a few pictures uh, to share with you. This is one of my plates that I did make. Uh, it's a lizard chasing a butterfly. Um, this is one of my three three-dimensional 
so I create the plate um, and as you can see I have the slip on on there and then I kind of just made it uh, a 3d look to where you know it's not just the painting I also added um, it looking um, this way everyone loves these type of plates um, that I do I enjoy making them um, this is just one of them that I still have that I haven't let go of I was talking about the commercial micaceous clay so this is uh, one of the pieces that I created um, out of that so this is commercial clay it's almost like the traditional micaceous clay, but white, and it does have the gold glitter in it. I created this piece with the inspiration of my granddaughter, who was just, she just loves the Black Mesa um, and San Olifonso Pueblo, and was curious to know a lot more about it. So after discussing it with her grandpa, um, I guess when she was at school, she heard uh, stories of the Avanu that lived in the river there um, by the Black Mesa. And so after sharing the story with her, it kind of made me think of this piece as I was creating. That's kind of what I was seeing. Um, so as you can see, it doesn't sit straight. You know, there's it's like a venue. I mean, um, the Mesa area is the way I consider this piece, you know, creating the Mesa on the top. And then, you know, the black designs that I have here, I consider the water in the river and then the serpents are all the way around and so they're inside the water and I just did different um, designs on all of the avanios this is just stuff that I, I enjoy doing um, I did um, submit it at the Espinal Valley Art Show two years ago and I won first place with this. Um, the micaceous clay, I've done this piece, next piece that I, I'm gonna show you. I made her, I would say five years ago, and it's the corn maiden. I used micaceous clay along with the red slip to kind of um, make more um, of the piece realistic. This is the back of her, her hair. And so I did these all one by one, basically. And it's just to give her the groove of how real hair would look. Um, and she's also wearing, you know, the top for the traditional dancing. So what I did is I created the corn and I wanted it to look realistic. And so I put the red slip here and then on her necklace. And then this is her blouse and gave her her bangs. And I think with this piece, I really don't think I would have been able to make her if I didn't take the stone sculpting class. Taking the stone sculpting class really helped me to work on faces, on figurines of people. Um, so I'm really glad that I did take um, the stone sculpting class. I just wanted to um, also share that I started doing paintings uh, a few years back, maybe the last four years. My daughter, oldest daughter, um, loves to paint with acrylics and she is amazing and I, I never thought I would do it and one day I thought and I'll give it a try and so I bought some canvases and acrylic paints and stuff and started doing my drawings and I fell in love so I've been doing that since then also. I really like the like the two-tone colors and so a lot of my paintings are are with the two-tone colors. Um, I really love hummingbirds, I love butterflies, the sun faces, um, and then this is one of the other paintings I did. And two tones, uh, I just, you know, with, with the colors that I use, I just, I love, I love all colors. This is a ceramic piece that I made. Um, it's glazed. Um, so I just kind of added my designs on here. And the colors that represent our colors, we have our summer and winter clans. Um, I'm a, on the winter clan myself. With these colors, that's kind of what I use a lot of is to represent our our clans that we have at the Pueblo. Also the designs with the feathers. Um, you know, these can be our, considered as our Pueblo steps at the Pueblo. 
uh, Kiva steps, um, clouds, you know, um, every color, every design represents uh, a story on here. I just wanted to share a little bit of my art with you. I enjoy baskets. Um, so my whole home inside has uh, baskets hanging on the wall. And I think this is like the last piece I'm going to show you. And it's been my favorite since the day I made it. Um, I wanted to try to make a traditional basket out of clay. So one day I decided to try it. Um, I used a traditional basket that I laid the slab of clay in uh, to give it the effect of the traditional basket. This is the traditional basket that I used and see how it has all the, the little coils around inside and out. And so that was my goal was to create a piece out of clay to look like a traditional basket. This was the outcome. So every coil that is in here, I created every coil one by one by hand to give it that texture of a traditional basket. After it dried, I did add the micaceous slip on there and I added the traditional red slip to give the designs of the basket. I also added with the traditional basket that I used, the, the real one, it created all the grooves that I wanted it to look like a traditional basket. So I, I did it and I um, took it to the Espanola Arts and Craft Show and I won first place with this. Everybody thought that I had weaved it. They asked me how long it took me to weave and I told them it's not a, I didn't weave it, I, it's, it's made out of clay. So as they got closer to look at it, they couldn't believe that it was made out of clay. So this has always been my favorite piece that I created. Um, it was a lot of work, but it was so worth it. This is, this is what I love to do. And I will share a few of my other pieces um, so you can see some of my other paintings and you can see some of my pieces that I have done with my plates and everything else and I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for letting me share a little bit about myself and with that you all take care and stay safe. Thank you.